a little over two years ago, and it started with two people when we were invited by Pastor's team to join the Rosh Kodesh. Um, and my wife and I started. And um, this is the first point. A miracle happened. <laughs> we never realized that um, our obedience to God, my wife and I, would end up with actually 26 prayer watches. Wow. wow. And the, the wonderful thing here is more than 200 of our church members are already involved. Wow. wow. I'm Carlos Inuster, the Senior Pastor of the Ministries of the Living Body of Christ International. And uh, let me share to you our journey of faith before ICJ Rosh Kodesh and after. Um, we have been in the ministry uh, to the tribes in the marginalized poor for uh, 37 years now. <clears throat> and just like other uh, probably local churches, we have been doing ministries bringing the gospel to communities and tribes in places in provinces like Palawan, Davao, Marinduque, Bicol, Ilo, Iloilo, Negros, Samar, Kalinga, and later and among others. This was before our involvement with the ICJ, ICJ Rosh Kodesh. It was a little over two and a half years ago that we were invited by um, Pastor Steve Murpuri to take uh, part in an online prayer uh, fellowship. And it was during the pandemic and we took part every month for uh, to pray for Israel. At first, it was just my wife and I. And then Pastor Steve asked us if we would like to take one hour. And we took up the challenge. And the rest is a miracle. <laughs> and the miracle was from one prayer watch. We are now 26. Actually, we're more than 26 because the others were not given the opportunity. So what we do is we encourage members of the church to also come up with a parallel uh, online and offline face-to-face -face. Uh, so what we are doing online we're still doing with our um, prayer meetings and we do not have Israel Sunday pastor because every Sunday is Israel Sunday <laughs> <laughs> and a part of our liturgy of worship is we pray for Israel there's a one one prayer warrior that is assigned for that every Sunday and the wonderful miracle here is there's no exhortation from day one. We never ask people to give, to pray, mm. and to even go. Not just make a stand for Israel, but go. And um, I just want to uh, thank Pastor Steve for challenging um, some of our intercessors. And I think it was last year in the Feast of Tabernacles that uh, they were able to go to Israel and pray for the nations of the world, including Israel. And we had the opportunity to um, have one of our members of the church to sing an original composition entitled Jesus Makharika during that prayer meet. This is after being involved in Rosh Kodesh and ICJ. Our involvement with ICJ actually opened doors to our overseas cross-cultural nations and we started with Saba and we've been praying for the Muslims and it was our involvement in the ICAJ Rosh Kodesh that because this is the year of open doors and God opened the door for us and so we are so grateful to ICAJ and for Pastor Steve to uh, if, uh, for inviting us to be part of this um, ministry ICEJ actually afforded us an opportunity and a privilege to bless Israel. Our church is um, not a church of the affluent. We're actually a church of the marginalized poor. And we also minister to the tribes. And I was thinking, what can we do to bless Israel? And the Lord just spoke to us. That you are not poor enough to do nothing. Mm. And when the opportunity to pray for Israel came, we just grabbed it. And the amazing thing here is the Genesis 12, 1 to 3 happened. The miraculous provisions happened because we started praying for Israel corporately. Amen. 
We didn't ask people to give. Somehow the Lord just touched the hearts of people to give and we were just surprised that um, we have been we have been giving uh, we're the highest you're the highest giver to ICJ Philippines wow. <laughs> there's another one so the but uh, but the, the miracle is we're not really affluent we're not rich but you know um Im imagine if you are a person that cannot cannot give so much but yet there's this ICEJ knocking at your door and even if one peso you can give you give for Israel and this has been a game changer for the members of our church those who are involved in the ministry of prayer they experience supernatural things in their personal life and they are members of our church can you stand There are what we call focal persons. So each focal person handles about eight to ten people, and they're quite standalone. So they actually don't need me now. In fact, whenever Pastor Steve calls for um, uh, the reason why we got 26 hours is because two uh, backed out last minute and we just grabbed it. The sec uh, the, the miracle of uh, God's provision. Um, happened when we when members of our church started to give and we had no expectation to give for Israel none we never asked people to give for Israel somehow the prayer for Israel did something and I can only say that I never preached Pastor Steve I never preached about Israel it's just God has been touching the hearts of the members of our church and they started reading materials about Israel and most of them had been checking the ICEJ websites and they've been the ones doing the what we call marites they're the one that uh, spreads the nice gossips about uh, Israel going through and so they're more actually updated than, uh, than the pastor so sometimes when I, I ask them, oh, can you do this prayer? You say, Pastor, that's last week, this week, this is the... <laughs> so I'm so ashamed. <laughs> and helping God's people through prayer was the beginning. And the financial giving was the second one. Mm -hmm. And here we saw that um, members of our church, without being told, just closed ranks and they just started to pray and this has been the breakthrough for us this has been the game changer for us wow. when we really started praying corporately seriously for israel things really happened that only god can can do Praise and glory to God, you know, when, whenever we set our hearts to pray, uh, it's just uh, how God designs our spirit to really connect with what is in his heart. And this is what uh, we have been witnessing. And uh, with that, uh, with those 15 uh, watches assigned to me, I'm so thankful to the Lord for those faithful uh, watchmen and women who, who took also these hours uh, and bring it to their churches so I'm just overseeing them and uh, praise the Lord there's no resistance at all whenever we, we, we encourage them if they could take this watch this and that praise the Lord and I I know God is doing something also in their midst and one thing I can uh, just uh, continue to testify that through Rosh Kodesh uh, prayer watches. We we have seen houses really literally becoming houses of prayer, Amen. not only the church. Amen. So praise and glory to God, and this is God's grace, you know, Amen. giving us the opportunity to bless Israel and to stand with them at such a time as this, and also to give uh, what we have. Praise God, Pastor Carlos, you encouraged me all the more, and uh, how the Lord really is opening the hearts of those 
who would like to just be a blessing, a channel of blessing Amen. to Israel, Amen. even financially. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Roy. Actually, Pastor Roy's territory has enlarged because not only is their church part of the Rosh Kodesh Network, other churches have joined as well Amen. in their city of Valenzuela <laughs> and other parts. So uh, that's uh, what has happened. So praise God. Thank you, Pastor Roy. God, River of God, we're able to enter Rosh Kodesh. And alam nyo po, uh, one of the things na nakita kong I was blessed with Rosh Kodesh is yung prayer life ko. Become a relationship to our Abba Father. Lumalim po yung panalangin. Parang nung araw pag prayer, parang, ah, prayer. Pero ngayon, iba na, iba na yung nag-steer the arms sa puso ko na keep praying for our nations. And we have done watch. So every Friday po, yung dogmas namin, we are giving time for Rosh Kodes. At dyan na-develop yung, we pray for, alam mo naman, um, uh, CLSF, IFP, for the eight pillars. So kasama din po yan. And one thing that blessed me also for us for this is to be able to see other nation participating in prayers. Kaya nga nakatawa minsan, ano daw bansa? Ano, ano bansa? <laughs> Pero we, we, you know, the heartbeat of God. Now, so we started doing the FB Live and, you know, just waving the, the banner of Jesus and just, you know, saturating um, um, the internet with, with worship, with prayer. And then um, we joined Rosh Kodesh on um, January 2022. Um, and, wow. you know, praise God, we started with one hour. We were just really nervous. It's, you know, it's just really <laughs> what's going to happen, what's this. And, you know, we're just really excited and, and nervous at the same time. But, you know what, God has, um, you know, really been touching us and used us um, in different ways. Um, different places as well and you know as as he uses us um, to, uh, as he brings us to different different places um, you know our our hours of prayer in the Rosh Kodesh our assignment also grew so um, after three months uh, we were like three hours and then um, also in 2022 um, the Lord opened the doors for 14 uh, raise the banner dancers um, to minister to the Feast of Tabernacle yes yeah, so praise the Lord and and so the, the hours just continued growing as well. And so it's like um, Sister Rose is saying always to us that um, since um, I wasn't able to join them, but with Pastora Melody and Sister Wang, uh, we were like this, you know, in the Philippines, it's like a base. We're just praying rah, 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 rah. <laughs> out there. They're doing the fight out there. But we're here. It's like in the, in the base and we're just doing the fight in the spiritual realm. And so, um, and the group continued to join, and, and by the end of 2022, we got promoted to five hours until <laughs> in 2023, uh, seven hours. And, and so the, the opportunity to minister as well to different nations or to different, to different places also, you know, open doors. So there, it's like really the, door, the Lord is just opening doors as well for the group. And, and last year in 2023, um, 28, so 28 raise the banner dancers and also worship team. So now we have like um, warm singers and musicians joining the team. Um, so they went to the Feast of Tabernacles and really experienced that they woke up with the uh, rockets firing. <laughs> so, but, but then, you know, the Lord also used them. So in the bomb shelter, they were leading worship. They were leading, oh, the, you know, um, worship there. And they're like, you know, Sister Rose was like, don't watch the news, declare Psalm 91. And everyone was like, declaring Psalm 91. Really? So, so it's like, um, you know, the Lord even used the team, uh, the Filipinos to, to oh, even Lord. minister, even during the time of war inside the bomb shelter. And, and, as, and then the Lord continues to, you know, to just bring us different places. And, you know, I think it's, it's really from the Lord. And as, as, he, as he opened doors for, you know, for, for the group to minister, you know, the numbers of the hours also grew. <laughs> so you can, you can really see, like, we need to really, that the prayer, you know, is really like, you know, we, it's, a found, it's a foundation, you know, part of a foundation of our ministry. So you don't just go out there. You just don't go out to war and... And, and just you know, you just have you have a, you have a preparation, and you have you know you have all this you have all this um, ammunition within you, right? Yeah. God given ammunition, and you know personally, you know and individually, uh, 
we have also experienced a lot of blessings in our own lives and you know what for me I, I really you know you know hearing um, answers to your prayers you could hear news and something like this happening and it was like you've prayed that in Rosh Kadesh for how many times um, like um, I think in April 13 when uh, Iran bombed or you know sent rockets or missiles to, to Israel and then I, I've heard like a testimony that there are like um, a lot of the weapons or the missiles didn't even you know were yeah. even sent off they like, I think they got destroyed in the basin wow we were praying in like in starting 2022 that the hand of the, that the angels of God you know destroy the weapons and literally destroy the weapons in the basin in, the, in those uh, in those uh, weaponry so it's like no, it, it really happened, Lord. So it's you, I know it's you. They might say it's something else or what, but I know Lord, it's it's the Lord, it's the hand of God. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Wow, what exciting enthusiasm, you know, when you join. And what happened was after their, their praying, the door opened, they were asked to go minister in Israel at the Feast of Tabernacles, where they became a blessing to the thousands of pilgrims that came. Amen. Amen. And then the following year again, which was last year, yeah. and even in the bomb shelters, they were leading praise and worship. <laughs> yeah. So you can sense the excitement, the enthusiasm, that it's a privilege to be part of a Rosh Hashanah's global prayer movement. Okay. God provided for me to go to Israel, uh, 2020. It was right before I came home. That was when the pandemic happened. And I couldn't see my kids for six months. I was literally crying because I couldn't see them. Now my wife, who is the one who started the prayer group because God told her to start an incense for the nations during the pandemic, she was faithful in praying every day and started a prayer group and even prayed for Israel through Rosh Kadesh. Um, she was told by the Lord to start a prophetic council for the Philippines and then uh, with Pastor Shem uh, Bench. And then I was the worship leader for their worship caravan. We went around the Philippines and even in Europe. And then they went to Israel with Pastora Beth, uh, blessing Israel and Europe. And God made all these things possible, I believe, because we had the heart for Israel. And yeah. that was the core of the heart of um, Sister Sherry's uh, ministry. So I believe. And But then here's another thing. When they went to Israel, it was the exact time right before this uh, that day, October 7, and they were told to pray for Israel uh, really hard for that time, and they were had a sense that something was going to happen to Israel. Um, I believe that uh, God is, whenever I'm in that side, that session, uh, and I, I usually sing uh, old songs or, you know, really classic worship, then I'm happy when I see those other nations and have some reactions. But I don't really know how many people watch it, actually. <laughs> so I, I believe that when we do these prayers, we also walk by faith and not by sight, because we don't know what's happening, who's, who's watching, what's the effect. But I know that as we bless Israel, as, as it says in the Bible, through the Abrahamic covenant, those who bless Israel will be blessed. And um, those who curse Israel will be cursed. Amen. So let's just... Well, this is Sister Jean Diallo. <laughs> And she's the one that's this leading this together with the pastors who are here. So please share, sister. That's one. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm actually going to be sharing more about the effect of uh, the Rosh Kodesh on the IFP youth. Because uh, I, ICEJ and IFP have long been friends, like way, way before even our national... Uh, Chairman Bishop Dan Balais. He was a member of the board before. He was, the national director. he was the national director before, and then he just focused on IFP. And, and Pastor Steve is his dear friend. So when Pastor Steve started to um, give us a, a assignments for the Rosh Kodesh, it, it started in July 2021. It was just one prayer slot for the IFP board, and then it grew to the following year. Pastor Steve gave us another slot for the youth. So we're like, okay, let's mobilize the youth. And um, Pastor Joel Bataklan is one of the is the IFP board who leads the IFP youth. He's here with us. He was the one who facilitated it. And what happened is the youth were encouraged. Oh, we're gonna be praying for Israel. And then one of the things that uh, struck us was, I think one of the prayer leaders also mentioned this is. There's beauty in seeing that 
oh, and it's not just my nation who's praying. We have another nation before us or after us. And it's something, I mean, it's something special when they pray for you and they say, oh, you're from the Philippines. Let's, let's bless the Philippines. <laughs> Even those small portions in between the watches, it's something that really touches your heart and it, it just opens up something. And and the good thing about this is, is that this happened during the pandemic. That was the time when the youth were really, really depressed. So going online and having prayer groups was something that really touched our spirits. And it it was actually a realization for us that, okay, so God is not limited by time and space. The presence of God also exists on an online platform. And that actually birthed, uh, that, uh, the Rosh, our involvement in the Rosh Kodesh actually became a, like a model for us to have online prayer initiatives. We had started in 2021 and in 2022, we were inspired by the format, the framework that you had. So we were able to do a 24-hour prayer watch and then a 100-day weekly prayer watch. So if they can do it on the international scene, we can do it here in the Philippines as well. And so thank you. Thank you for teaching that to us during the pandemic. And the beautiful thing about this is I have some pictures here. Um, we had prayer slots from all over the Philippines at Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao for two years. And then on the third year, 2023, that was the first time we saw each other face to face. And we were instantly friends because we had been on Zoom during Rosh Kodesh or during the IFP prayer watches. And that friendship is still, still continu continues until today. So we'd like to thank the ICEJ for involving us, the, our generation, and um, just late, uh, latest of the IFP prayer initiatives is the For Zion's Sake 100 Days Prayer. The youth who were trained during the Rosh Kodesh prayer initiatives, they're leading their own, wow. their own prayer slots right now. And it's such a great time. And last thing I'd like to say is that um, the ICEJ prayer uh, points have been a way to educate the network yes. because they're seeing what are the actual issues. How do you filter what you see on social media? Don't believe just because the celebrities are saying it. Go into the actual issues and pray through that. Yeah. So to God be the glory and thank you so Amen. much. This is the powerhouse of, of the Lord, our intercessors. Amen. Amen. And 